So, Dakini and I were walking on the beach this morning and there was a lot of starfish washed up. We were picking them up and throwing them out as far as we could into the deep water so they could live another day. We come across one starfish that was different than the rest and it had a, a fishing line wrapped around it. And when I looked more closely it had a great big fishing hook which I picked, which I took off it. And the fishing hook was tied to the starfish with the fishing line and a whole pile of seaweed. And so the poor starfish couldn't eat properly and got washed into shore. And so I unwound the fishing line off the starfish and threw the starfish as hard as I could back out into the deep water where it could have another day. And then I realized that, you know, if the starfish had the consciousness, it would have been able to take the, the fishing line off itself. If it, had have been, it had, if it had enough consciousness, it would have been able to do it. But any human has enough consciousness to take the fishing line, well, pretty much any human, has the consciousness to take a fishing line off a starfish to unravel it, remove the hook, and if they want to, throw the starfish back into the deep water. Because humans have higher consciousness than starfish. And that reminded me of, well, the starfish was trapped because it had fishing line wrapped around it and a hook stuck to it, and it didn't have the consciousness to get out of that trap. And that was creating suffering for it, a great deal of suffering, but it couldn't do anything about it because it simply didn't have the consciousness to do what was required to remove the fishing line and the fishing hook. Yet, someone with a little bit of higher consciousness, a human being, could do it. I see the same with human beings to some degree. Everybody wants to be happy, everyone wants to be free, but people don't even realize how they're trapped. They don't even realize that the one that wants to get free, that the one that wants to be happy, is the trap. And because they can't see it, like the starfish could, wasn't aware of how this was working around it, how, this, how to get this off, the same as the human being, the human being can't get out of the trap. hooked. The trap for human beings is the ego, is the mind. And it doesn't have enough separation from itself to see that it is the problem. So it can never really get out of the trap because it's the one trying to get out. The trap is tr the trap. The trap is trying to get out. And the only way that can occur is if the trap is actually removed. So people try and think their way out of the trap. They try to contemplate their way out of the trap. They try to study their way out of the trap. You can't. The trap just gets more knowledge. And maybe it thinks it's getting free, but it's not. It's not getting free. It's just getting more knowledge about the trap, about the prison. It is the prison. There is no other prison. The identified mind is the prison. And so, in Buddhism, we abandon the, the prison. We abandon the mind for what is real. Whether it's the breath, or a footfall, or a sound, anything that is real in the world. The only thing that is not real is what you think, your mind, the dream, that thinks it's actually a someone that has a past and a projected future. There's only one way out of the trap. And that's first of all to realize that you are in a trap. That life is suffering. The first noble truth. And that this suffering is caused by the mind itself, by its desires and by its attachments to things. That's the first thing that has to be realized. That there is actually a trap there. That there is a prison there. And that it is causing the suffering. 
Once this has been realised, then a plan can be made on how to get out of the prison. And Gautama the Buddha gave us an eightfold path to that. So really, there's only one thing. If you can learn to abandon your mind, if you can learn to abandon your mind for what is real, you're on the way. If you can start living more in this moment and less in the dream, you're on the way. But you don't do that by thinking, and you don't do that by contemplating or procrastinating or by collecting knowledge. You do it by abandoning the dream for what is real. Mindfulness, every moment, always present to what you're doing. If you're present to the dream, you pretty much live as the dream. And the dream is a prison. It's a prison of suffering. Because its desires and its attachments create suffering. So, like the starfish, it wasn't until something or someone with higher consciousness came along and was able to see the problem and set it free that something changed. Otherwise, the starfish was actually going to die because it was trapped. So, too, with this prison that people find themselves in, the best is to find someone with more consciousness than yourself and get them to help you get out of the trap. And so as people gain higher consciousness, as they get more conscious, they can then show others who have less consciousness how to get out of this trap. But it's pretty much always the same deal. First of all, you have to help people realize they're in a trap. In other words, the mind itself is the cause of suffering and you're stuck in it. A dream that is not really you. And then you have to give a methodology, a plan, a goal on how to do that. Mindfulness, meditation, the best. Because it puts you back in touch with reality and leaves the dream behind. And it's up to you because you're the only one who can practice. No one else can practice for you. People who come along to meetings thinking that somehow something magical is going to happen usually miss the boat because it is in your practice that things change. In your abandoning of the dream for something that is real that you start to regain reality from the dream you're in. Now ultimately, that practice leads to putting awareness onto beingness the vast nothingness that we are. When we can put our awareness on what's real in the real world, it is not so hard to put our awareness on beingness, the nothingness that we are, that doesn't move, that doesn't make noise. But it begins with an ability to be present to the moment, to be here now and live here now, not here, but here fiercely in the moment rather than placidly in the dream. So teachers come along and they hopefully have a little bit more consciousness and they say, hey, you're stuck. They won't say you've got a fishing line all over you and you've got a hook on you, but they'll say you're stuck, you're living in your head, you think you're a somebody that's suffering and it's not true. You are not a somebody who is suffering. You are all pure awareness. You are all beingness. You always have been. You always will be. The vast nothingness is you. And in abandoning the dream, you're preparing yourself for that. In an ongoing way. It's up to you. The ball is in your court. Thank you for setting.